Hello and welcome to another episode of Code and Coffee. My name is Brian Selvey. I'm your host. Today I'd like to give you an overview of the non-residential indoor lighting wheel. Um, you'll see the um, information there to the right of your screen. Uh, highlights some of the features of the lighting wheel. Today I'm going to walk you through these features and just a brief overview of how to use it. So I uh, hope you enjoy this show. Um, so a little bit about the lighting wheel. Uh, this lighting wheel was developed as a quick reference to check whether your indoor lighting uh, that is going to be installed or is already installed uh, meets the requirements of Title 24 Part 6. So without having to open the standards. So this particular uh, tool has packed a lot of code into one handy little tool. So this is going to cover all the allowed lighting power um, allowances so watts per square foot for any given lighting area or primary function area these are all based on table or chapter 140.6 c2 um, those are found in the standards it also covers all the mandatory control requirements those are found in uh, section 130.1 a through e uh, this also covers new construction as well as uh, alterations so let's take a look at our overview um, I'm going to switch to a different screen here so you can see what I'm seeing here on on the uh, fact sheet here. And by the way, this fact sheet uh, can be downloaded at the energycodeace.com website. I'll walk you through finding that in just a minute. But let's overview some of the features here. So this wheel has two sides to it. You can see uh, side one with the Energy Code Ace logo on it right there. Um, so it is movable, rotatable to uh, highlight the primary function areas that are regulated by uh, the energy code. Um, there are two layers to each side and I'm going to demonstrate this in just a minute. So two layers front, two layers back, right? Um, each of the categories um, are based on the primary function areas that you're going to find in section 140.6. Um, area 3, so if we're looking at this, uh, uh, this tab three is going to highlight the control requirements based on section uh, 130.1 uh, A through E. Going to cover all your mandatories. Um, this area here to the right is going to cover all your triggers. Basically, allow uh, tell you when that particular control is required. Um, and you flip this thing over. Um, it's going to give you some additional information using the uh, area category method and taking advantage of footnote credits. So you see that down here in area two. So um, this is a very, very helpful tool. Uh, let's take a little bit more of a close up here of it. So you can see um, section uh, tab number two here um, covers uh, all the control exceptions or options applicable to the area type. The, the left hand side of this piece of pie is for new construction or additions or uh, any type of alteration that would trigger all of the requirements. Otherwise, the right hand side of the piece of pie covers the alteration requirements. So we'll take a look at that uh, when we fill out our, uh, when we do a little uh, demo of this. Uh, here's a bit of a highlight on the triggers. You can see a little uh, closer view of this has all the five layers of mandatory lighting controls and when those controls are triggered. So some of them are based on the size of the room. Some of them based on the wattage. Um, other ones are based on um, uh, various control types being required. Well, uh, that's a good overview of the wheel. Let's take a look at it. Um, I'm going to move to a, a close-up view uh, of this lighting wheel so you can see uh, I'm here on the front side. Um, we're going to do uh, you know, a couple little scenarios, take a look at how this would apply. So um, I, m the hardest part of this is getting familiar with all these different uh, primary function areas and where they're located, uh, the front side or the back side. So uh, you can see, um, let's just start out with an office area. So we've got some um, uh, an office area categorized by greater than 250 square feet or 
equal to or less than 250 square feet. Each of those have a different lighting power density. So we can see that greater than 250 is 0.75 watts per square foot. Uh, less than 250 have a little higher allowance, one watt per square foot. So if we're talking new construction or an addition, um, we're going to be on the left-hand side of this piece of pie here. We can see that manual area controls apply. We've got to have on-off switches located in the rooms. If we uh, have certain exceptions here, you know, depending on where that uh, primary function area is or um, other requirements, we can go apply one of those exceptions there. So take a look at those exceptions when you're reading this. Uh, our next layer of lighting controls is multi-level lighting controls. You can see that box is checked here. So we look at multi-level lighting controls, section 130.1b. Uh, this applies to enclosed spaces greater than 100 square foot, uh, greater than one luminaire with greater than two lamps, and a lighting power density greater than 0.5 watts per square foot. You can see here, in addition, you're going to have some uh, alteration exceptions. So we'll get to that shortly. Um, backing up here, uh, auto shutoff controls. You can see, uh, sorry, my camera's not focusing completely here. We're looking at a real close up. So looking at when uh, partial on vacancy sensor and occupancy sensors required there. So you can get into a little more detail. Our next layer is automatic daylighting or daylighting controls that's required. Um, here's our triggers. Greater than 24 square feet of glazing per room and greater than 120 watts of primary side lit uh, zones and an LPD of 0.3 watts per square foot greater. Uh, our last layer of lighting controls are the demand responsive lighting. Um, that is triggered when your building is uh, habitable space greater than 10,000 square foot. That's a mandatory requirement there. So um, in addition to that, um, we've got some power adjustment factor credits uh, here. Um, this is uh, number two PF. So daylight dimming plus off. That is allowed in the office space plus auto daylighting um, requirement here. So all right, if that was an altered office area, now, this applies to our wattage uh, allowance. So if we're 85% or less of our area category wattage allowance, so based on the size of the office, greater than 250, we've done the math for you. That's 0.64 uh, watts per square foot. And if you're 250, now it's pretty simple math. It's 85 or less. If that's the case, if you're installing that, then look, you're doing manual area controls, probably already there. Your multi-level lighting controls can be two levels or A, B switching, bi-level lighting controls there. Um, you don't have to do auto daylighting. You don't have to do demand responsive controls in that case. So that's how the, the tool is used. You can apply this to various uh, primary function areas. You can see these are all listed in uh, section 140.6 of the standards. You can go look at that table and get a better feel for how these are laid out. Uh, on the back side, if you're using the area category method, you'll see the mandatory lighting controls here, um, as well as this handy little footnote table. This um, footnotes are available you know, based on the footnote credit here. So keep in mind these footnote credits for additional lighting power are use it or lose it credits. You either get the full credit um, or you get the installed wattage, whichever is less in this case. So you're going to find certain uh, primary function areas are going to have the little asterisks by it when you walk by. So in this case, general commercial and industrial work area, you can see for low bay, uh, 0.9 watts per square foot and it has a footnote uh, number two so we go over here to footnote number two and say oh look 0.5 watts per square foot for specialized task work you could apply that additional lighting power credit remove that task lighting out of your general lighting budget uh, free up some uh, of that uh, lighting power allowance
So that's how the lighting wheel is used. Um, let me show you how to find that at the Energy Code Ace website. If you go to energycodeace.com, go to the resources tab. I like to use the filtering tools. So if you filter your um, search, and I like to uh, use topics, uh, lighting, uh, building types, non-residential, it's going to give return a, a search like this and take a look at that. There's our fact sheet on how to use the indoor lighting wheel. Um, we also have a, a flyer, the formula to success. Um, if you'd like to get yourself a lighting wheel, we have a way to order these online. So let's take a look at our uh, the page two of our download here. We go to the bottom and you can uh, order a pack of 25 through our online uh, uh, request here. You click that link there. You're going to have to enter a username. Username is Energy Code Ace. Password is light wheel so let's take a look at that what that looks like here once you log into that portal and it looks like this and uh, you'd have to buy those in packs of 25 um, for 65 bucks that's basically the cost of printing and shipping that to you so um, yeah there's no profit uh, made by energy code ace on that so anyways uh, I hope this is informative um, let me uh, Switch back here. I uh, hope this information was informative of how to use the tool. Uh, please hit the like and share button. If you have any questions or need some further um, information on this, you can email me at ace TV, that's A C E T V, at energycodeace.com or post a question in the uh, chat below. So, hope you have a great day. Thank you.